Hey there, Ecam fam. Happy Monday and welcome back to the test studio. I am so excited to be back here. I almost forgot because <laughs> I'm just getting back from vacation. I've missed everyone, but Robert was kind enough to send me a reminder email and it's really fun to be back here and spending some of my time today hanging out with everyone. We, as always, are so excited that you're here. We're so excited that you're here live. So if you have any questions throughout this broadcast, definitely throw them into the chat. If you put a Q colon in front of them, it's much easier for me to find them but I'll pick them up anyway. So, so if you if you just throw those questions in, we'll be sure to ask as we are live. And if you're catching us on replay, don't worry, we'll still take your questions, drop those in, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. It looks like we have Parker in the house and Luis is here. Let us know where you're watching from. Let us know what the weather is like there. It is like the most perfect summer here in the Boston area. It's cool in the morning, cool in the evenings, and like decently hot during the day. It's been awesome. Knock on wood. Hopefully it stays this way. And hopefully you are all having a wonderful summer as well. Uh, a couple of quick announcements before we jump into today's Meet the Fam interview. If you are not yet on Discord with us, we are having just a blast over there. So whether you're you know, not a Facebook user and you want to hang out with us, or you just want some additional functionality and the ability to, to chat and to meet other Ecamm users, other live streamers and content creators and video podcasters, come hang out with us. You can be part of both the community and the Discord server, or just one if you want to. So if you go over to ecamm.tv slash Discord, you can find us over there. We would love to hang out with you, uh, open to everyone, and our, we have beta group in there as well. So if you want to be a beta tester, in the Discord, you are welcome. And this week we have episode four of Marshall Creates. If you've been following along with us, you know how amazing this series is. If you haven't, jump on live and hang out with Marshall. It, uh, episodes are every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern here on YouTube. It's also on LinkedIn. So if you're over there, that is a great space to find us there. Um, and this, this week, Marshall's going to be talking all about how to use Ecamm and Keynote together. So if you're a Mac user, which you likely are if you're hanging out with us, then you have Keynote already on your computer. So this is a really great opportunity to learn how to level up your presentations, uh, your, gra your graphics, and some of the cool overlays and things that you can do. Uh, Keynote actually is a really powerful, really professional software. So come hang out. This is an open Q&A. So uh, Marshall actually is creating a full tutorial video that will be up here on YouTube that will drop this week before this episode goes live. So uh, whether you catch that and have follow-up questions or you just have a lot of questions and you want to come and play around, it's a really great time to do that. Um, and last up, we have brought building blocks over to our YouTube channel. So it's been out on, on Unfulgence channel for a bit now. It is just a really great opportunity to dive into Ecamm and to dive into the building blocks of live streaming, of video production, of video podcasting. Uh, this week, Friday, 10 a.m. Eastern here on YouTube, you will find Anna and Fulgence talking all about lower thirds, which is awesome because if we're, if you're into video like the rest of us then you know how impactful and important lower thirds are so being able to put your name and your guest name being able to have really cool animations that come in and out as you're working your way through your video just adds a lot of character and personality to your videos so hopefully you will catch us for that I'm just going to jump over and say hi to everyone. Everyone is popping on. It's so great to see you. We have Douglas hanging out from upstate New York. Hope to see you at People of Video, Douglas. We're coming to Albany in September. Uh, it would be great to meet you. It would be great to hang out with everyone. Oh, no, Rob. 110. I'm hoping you have air conditioning and a pool and, and some frozen drinks <laughs> to help you through the heat. That is definitely, uh, definitely, definitely... Very hot. <laughs> Very hot for me. Uh, yeah, I was enjoying the time out. I was uh, up last week with my family and some friends in rural Maine on a lake. So it was nice to be kind of away from technology for a little bit. Thanks to everyone for your patience as we're jumping back in it today. Welcome to the Ecamm fam. Please feel free to ask as many questions as you want here. And we hope you'll catch us in the Discord or on the uh, community, which is on Facebook. We would love to hang out with you and get to know you better. Um, it's hot here in the UK. I know our UK friends have been definitely facing some heat waves there. Hopefully we can send your, our cool weather to you. Uh, welcome, welcome. Robert is hanging out in the chat while I banter on. <laughs> and Todd is here. And we have Preston here. Uh, I know I um, 
I have actually been to Copenhagen. It is an incredible city and we would love to get back. We we are coming out to, this is not helpful to you in Copenhagen, but we are going to be in the UK uh, in November for Courageous Content Live and for Ian Anderson Gray's event in uh, early November, end of October timeframe. So, oh, I don't know if that's easier for you. Probably not. But if you if you are a traveling European, <laughs> you can come from Copenhagen down to the UK, down up sideways. Not geographically savvy over here, but we would love to see you be awesome. Well, let us jump in. Today, I am really excited to be hanging out with Robert McCarter. He is a real estate agent and an auctioneer, which is just about the coolest thing ever, <laughs> working at Maryland Homes team. He's been at it since 1991, and he has sold over $1 billion, with a B, in real estate throughout the Maryland and D.C. market. So if you're looking for a real estate agent, we might know someone. <laughs> we might know someone to help you out if you're in that Maryland and D.C. market. He has a solid reputation as an innovative leader, passionate agent who delivers measurable results to his clients, and he lives with his family in Hartford County. Welcome to the show, Robert. Thank you for having me, Katie. Thank oh my goodness, you. we're so excited to have you. I I think that it is absolutely incredible that you reached out because I have been wanting to talk to someone in real estate for a long time. And we actually, we had an interview, a Meet the Fam scheduled, um, and it just fell through due to scheduling and, and timing. So I, ne I never got to ask all my real estate questions and I have them all, I have them all right. ready to go. So I'm excited to have you here. Well, we covered a, a little bit in in the intro kind of your your bio on who you are but I'd love to hear how you got into real estate and and a little bit about auctioneering because that just sounds absolutely incredible so why don't you tell us a bit about your background and who you are and how you got to where you are well auctioneering certainly is a lot more fun uh, than <laughs> real estate uh, no question about it uh, you know when you can sell a box lot of books for a dollar and you find you've got thirty dollars worth of books in there you know it's a great it's a great uh, job to have but for sure. yeah I actually um, uh, grew up uh, going to auctions my dad used to drag me to auctions a couple it. of times a, a month it seems like and I used to hang around while he would try and buy an antique radio or so, <laughs> so I would cool. hang around and I would watch all everyone else buy box lots of things and furniture and stuff like that mm -hmm. and I was just a teenager then and that's kind of how i grew into the antique into the business um yeah. so i got my license when i was in uh when i was 21 uh through a correspondence course believe it or not <laughs> and awesome. uh so back then i had to like listen to cassette tapes and yep. things like that and and send my recordings off and have them judged and and uh things of that nature. oh do they so, they judge like your voice and how you sound yeah i used to so that i had a little so efficiency cool. apartment and i would line things around my room and then I would sell each item and record myself on a video, on, I mean, on a cassette tape, yeah. send that in. For those uh, that don't know what a cassette tape, it's that little square thing. <laughs> I know, you know, I wish I had real, one. Real, yeah. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> All the millennials that are watching, like, what's a, what's a cassette tape? They're Googling it right now on their phone. Exactly. You know? um, but but I would send that off and then they would, uh, uh, they would grade me on my ability to be able to sell things uh, fluently and to be able to get bids and things of that nature. So... Yeah. That is so, so cool. And I, I feel like it's, it's funny. We have a number of Ecamm fan members who, you know, have backgrounds in either like um, radio or, you know, things that are kind of like video adjacent. I feel like auctioneer, like you, you need to know how to use your voice. You need to know how to be able to communicate. So I, it's interesting that you kind of ended up in this, in this space or, or finding out your way back into video and being able to leverage that. Cause I think that you probably learned a ton in, the, in those cassette tape recordings and how you want to sound and how to be able to convey things and being fast. I'm sure you can be really, really That's snappy, right. really snappy in right. the world of auctioneering. Oh my goodness. I, well, that is really cool. I would love to take my kids to, I wish that there were more events around here that, um, that were like that. We've done antiquing, but never, never like had the sure. full auction, <laughs> auctioneering experience. I love it. Oh, yeah. oh, only an hour and a 30 minutes flight to London. Okay. Well then I'm going to see you. I'm going to see you there at the UK event. I love that. I absolutely love it. Well, I, I am fascinated when it comes to real estate because I feel as though there are a ton of opportunities for real estate agents, um, you know, or, or those even working with real estate to try to real estate agents to try to help them up their marketing when it comes to video. And I feel like off the top of my head, and I'm, pro I'm hoping that I'm kind of wrong and that you're, <laughs> you're going to school me a little bit on this, but it feels as though an easy one would just be able to give a visual 
tour of a property, whether that's live or recorded video, would be like a really great starting place. Is that how you started into into the world of video or was there a different aspect? What kind of information are you conveying on video as an agent? Well, I've always loved video since day one that video was kind of in the in inception. Sure. Um, I was one of the, I was the first uh, real, real estate agent in Maryland to receive his um, FH, uh, um, uh, um, the FAA uh, 333 exemption to be able to fly a drone around your property so and, cool. and actually incorporate the video into your wow, listing. Wow, so, neat. And that was, that was many years ago, back in 2013, 2014, I believe. Sure. So a couple of the national newspapers did articles on me with that and things wow. of that nature. So I've always been intrigued about video. But the one thing that, that I, it's very easy for me to video a house and the, and the interior sure. and the exterior and really try and market that. Yep. But one thing I never really did was incorporate myself mm -hmm. or the identity of my team into the video and to be able to market that out there into the, the Facebook world, which sure. Facebook was still very new at that point. Um, and I don't even think you could even post those types of videos up there. <laughs> Probably so not. Yeah. I had to really get, I really had to get out of my head. Um, and that was probably the, one of the biggest dilemmas that I faced as a real estate agent and most real estate agents face that as well. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to be able to write a contract and to be able to negotiate on behalf of your seller and on your buyer, but to actually put your face in front of the public, sure. you're so into your head as far as, am I makeup is correct? Is my hair done correctly? Am yep. I going to say the right thing? Am I going to make a mistake with my content, with sharing that information? Um, and that's, there's thousands of agents in the Maryland area, but very, very few actually incorporate video wow. and live streaming into their marketing. And they really should do more of that. They really yeah. should. Yeah. It's amazing because I feel as though real estate is such a people first business and, and y'all should be so used to having your face on like signs and like, in you know, in all of those places, cause you, you really are, you're finding someone that you no like and trust, right? When you're, when you're thinking about buying or selling a, a home for sure, any kind of property. So yeah, huge, huge opportunity as far as being able to kind of get out there and put yourself out there. But I, it's, it's the same issue that almost everyone has, especially when you're jumping into live streaming is that kind of fear of like, no one wants to look stupid or say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing or come across as not professional. So I think, yeah, finding it's, but I find it funny that, we, yeah, you, you should be great at <laughs> presenting and being, and being kind of a public face. Uh, I have a, I actually have a, a really close friend of mine uh, who is a real estate agent out in Minnesota and he has been not, not video. I'm trying to get him more into video, but he does these, um, I just love reading them. These, these Facebook posts, every time he sells a home, he posts a photo of the family in front of the home. And he writes these, like, he's a writer by background, but he writes these, like, really witty, funny blurbs about, like, the personality of the home buyers and how they, like, found this perfect home and, like, how they, you know, never thought that they would find it. And, and it's this, like, wonderful story of how these people discovered their, like, you know, forever home or their perfect home. And I don't live in Minnesota and I, you know, am likely not going to move out that way and buy a home from him. But if I was in the area, it would be incredibly compelling because you totally get a feeling of his personality and also how he is able to help these people find exactly what they're looking for. And that's just with a photo. So if he was doing that with video or, you know, what you are accomplishing with video, I think it's, it can be really impactful just to help people understand like what your personality is and what you're able to offer them and, and why they should trust you over someone else. That's right. Yeah. Video is so, so important. Uh, whether you're live streaming, whether you're just shooting a 30 second video, whether yeah. you're doing reels or Instagram, it's so much more engagement with that video and it's a 24 hour business card. It really is. So oh, yeah. able to connect with you on your personality level, things like, like that, as long as you're staying consistent with your engagement uh, with the, with the videos and things that, like that, that you produce, it's going to give you so much more interaction and engagement with video than it would be with a still image. Um, hey, I just sold one, two, three Smith Avenue. Here's the picture of the family and of the house. Yep. Listen, people are going to bounce, scroll right past yep. that. There's so much stuff on the internet. They're going to yep. scroll right past that. But if I happen to do a 30 second clip, you know, from m one of my uh, t uh, shows, if I'm able to do a 30 second clip from that and post that, people will sit on that and they won't bounce off of it as quickly mm -hmm. uh, because I'm engaging with them by video. Video is so, so powerful and so strong in, in our market. Absolutely. In pretty much any market right now. 
Oh, I believe it. So, so what are the kinds of videos that you do? So you said you started by doing drone footage and that you've done, you know, video footage of in and around properties. When it comes to live streaming, what is the, what is the format and what kind of content are you creating? So we have a full live stream show and That's we're awesome. one of the very, very few that do that in our region. That's great. Um, which I've always felt that to be, I, I've, I feel like it that gave me an edge yeah, uh, for sure. into the market. So, so I really started to research in the early days. We're approaching our hundredth episode now. Wow, congratulations. Let's Talk Real Estate. I have a YouTube channel. All our videos are posted there as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we're approaching our hundredth episode, but believe me, in the early days, it really came down to, I had to start with a company that was that I can grow with mm -hmm. um, and that was easy to use and Ecamm was definitely the yes. the only place <laughs> that I went to uh, yeah. it honestly was yeah. because it was something that I could easily grow with I kind of understood now what overlays were and setting up my scenery and setting up my show I yep. actually took a whiteboard and actually designed how <laughs> I, I want it. my show to be perceived yes and I would go through every single single scene and I just yeah. love the fact of being able to have guests so my goal was to I want one to bring in guests that were local business owners, whether you're um, a head of maybe a 501c, a, a nonprofit organization, yeah. and things of that nature. And I wanted to really highlight your organization on our show, but at the same time, offer some marketing stats, maybe some local marketing stats. Oh, and neat. Like that. So you're really but showing the really communities. Fun and engaging. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Oh, so, that's so smart. So in the middle, in the middle of our show, a couple of times we might run a couple of really professional short commercials. We just wanted to make make it to be not just this interview type of format, but actually make it a show where we start off with fun music and some fun overlays and things yeah. like that. And and you know, there's some really big names in the streaming world that I learned a lot from in the early days. I'm sure. Even the twins, I've communicated <laughs> with the twins several times and said, Hey, what in the world do I do about this? And sure. what do I do about that? And I've had the great responses from them that have really mm -hmm. helped me grow in the early days. So if you go to my YouTube channel and you happen to see some of the earlier shows, you'll see how I've progressed, even with my equipment, um, just adding on equipment and things like that over time. I didn't have to come out with a, a three to five thousand dollar budget right off the bat. I didn't even know what a stream deck was. <laughs> and now I use a stream deck. I've got lights. I've yep. got all kinds of craziness around me. And you know how that world is. Oh, yeah. But if you're new to streaming, listen, you don't have to have that kind of budget. The only the key thing is to start. You've got to start. Just start. Just you have content. Whether you're selling a product, whether you're selling real estate, you have content that you can work with. Yeah. Develop or, or time that content out and start with a great company like Ecamm and learn the process. Learn how to do it and just start. And that's what I did. Listen, my earlier shows, I stumbled. I fumbled. I... I, I had crazy backdrops. I ch I've changed my scenery many, many times. I'm yep. just trying to tweak it and learn from the best um, that are your collaborators uh, with uh, with uh, Ecamm. And I really do appreciate some of the big names out there. You know, Doc is one of them. And I appreciate some of the big names because I've really been able to learn a lot from them. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I think everything you said is just what we are constantly trying to hammer home to, to anyone, including if, if I saw I saw you out there first time, first time new Ecamm user. I think it's really, yeah, super important to remember that there's video is so visual and we're all kind of watching and checking out what everyone else is doing and scrolling through. And it can be really easy to, you know, to look at someone's video and say like, oh, you know, oh, I'm not, I'm nowhere near what they're offering or, you know, like the clarity of my video is nowhere near that, but they go back and look at their first video, <laughs> go back and look at our first video, go back and look at Robert's first video. It, it, it is yes. incredible. We all start somewhere. And, um, and yeah, I think it's really important to, to figure out what your starting point is and to figure out and make those tweaks and changes and updates as you go is how you're going to get to where you want to be and how you're going to be able to really get to know your customers and your potential customers better. Um, and yeah, you can, you can definitely use it for any market. I, again, I think real estate is such a great one because they're like law and like some of those other, other professions out there that are similar. Like there are tons of people that have a lot of questions as well. You know, people who are going through that process for the first time, there's a lot of things that they know by maybe like watching HGTV or something like that, but they don't know the actual data. They don't know what that experience is going to be like. And so, you know, there are misconceptions. There are tons of questions. All of that content is incredible to give out in video or to do a Q and A, or um, I love your idea of doing like a, a local show and really being able to show off communities. Cause I think, 
that's such a huge part about buying a property is, you know, what, what is the city that you're going to be in or the town that you're going to be in? You know, how, how close is it to the different shops and restaurants and places that you want to spend your time? It, it's something I didn't at all consider when we were buying, you know, our first house here. It was like, you know, we're like, we're, we ended up with a house that's maybe a four or five minute walk into, into the downtown city core, which we were like, oh, that's nice. But now it, it's like a lifeline for us. You know, we spend a ton of time walking into town and, you know, shopping here or, or grabbing, you know, grabbing dinner together as a family. Um, but it's something I didn't think of when I was buying a house, like what, you know, what the community actually was like. So I, I think that's huge being able to visually show that and answer questions along the way. That's right. Exactly. Yep. Yep. I love it. Hello. Hi, Timothy. Thanks for hanging out with us today. <laughs> uh, sorry, Robert, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, 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 no. It's great. I mean, everything you just said is just really point on. And, and it's just, uh, it's so important, again, for a lot of even the new streamers that are out there is just, mm -hmm. you know, again, you've got to get out of your own head sometimes. And that's what's <laughs> kept, I think, a lot of people with good information. They want to be able to provide it to the public. They just don't know how to do that. Yeah. And live streaming just is so engaging, um, be able to answer questions live and things of that nature, throw those questions and answers up on the screen. Yep. It's just very, very engaging. People really enjoy that, but you've got to get out of your head. You've got to stop yep. thinking about your hairdo, your makeup, your, yep. your scenery, your, the way you, you sound, the way you come across on the camera. You've got to get past that because no one is really looking for perfection. Yep. In fact, I really cling to those who are not perfect. I want to hear the dog in the background. I know you and I talked about that earlier. <laughs> I want to hear the dog in the background. Yep. I want to know that you're a real person coming across with real content that I yeah. can use. Um, I don't want you to, you know, I don't ever come off uh, with a sales pitch, you know, during our show. Our show is all about providing information, yeah, whatever that value. is, whether it's the top 10 ways of designing your kitchen or landscaping or winterizing your home for the winter mm -hmm. and things like that. I mean, I want to be the, the source of information for people to go to on a weekly or biweekly basis. Yeah. And I think it's important for you to have that same. If you come off very salesy, people are going to bounce right off your show. Yeah. Um, so you want to be that source of information. And that's what I love about our community. Yeah. And again, like I, that your industry in particular is one where you, you really do have to be able to build those relationships with customers and potential customers before they need you. <laughs> so you need that's like correct. a hard sell wouldn't work with any of those people because they are not, they're probably not in a mindset where they're ready to buy a, a property or they're thinking about that at that moment. But because you've built up that relationship with them and they've spent time with you when they are or when any of their their network is, any of their friends or their family that are in the area, you're going to be top of mind, right? You're going to be the person that they think of and that they know and trust because they've spent that time with you. So yeah, I, I think, you know, it, it's funny too. I, I think a lot of people when they're entrepreneurs or, you know, small business owners or, um, you know, or they're doing m multiple hats, you know, marketing is not, or video creation is not their main job. I think it's really important too, to remember that live video can be a really good central strategy as well. So if, if all you can do is, you know, one thing in the world of marketing, do live video because you can start with that and then you can clip that later or you can get those sound bites and, you know, and be able to convert that into, you know, little audio sound bites or audiograms that you can share through social media or, you know, or those quotes or those, you know, testimonials or reviews. Every interview that I do here for this, all of you say like the nicest possible things about Ecamm and your experiences. I could easily clip those out and, you know, do a little bit of editing and put those up on our website. I can, you know, grab the text of that and turn that into a, a little review that we can post in different places. All of that is, is from spending the time consistently on a regular basis, going live, bringing people on, getting familiar with that process helps you create way more content than just the live video, which is what makes it, I think, really cool is that it's, it's very low lift other than being a little intimidating when you first start. It's not that hard right. to get up and running and to be able to really think strategically long term about how you can use all those, you know, relationships and the questions that you're getting from your, you know, from your customers and potential customers. All of that creates really valuable content. It is. Yeah. You're taking that one live stream show, whether it's 30 minutes, 15 minutes or an hour, we do about 45 minutes to an hour, Yep. but you could take that one live show and you could repurpose that over and over again. You could take segments oh, yeah. out of it. Yep. You could post it on your reels account. You could post it yep. on Instagram. Uh, you could do TikTok. Uh, you know, there's a lot that you could read. You could take from that one live stream that you've done. 
Um, so it's just it's it's really important. But like I said, you know, even for the new streamers out there, just getting started is really really key. You can always grow from there, and there's so many people out there that you can learn from, such as even a show like this, like the Ecam Fam. Just listening to those that have that you know the real live people that are out there doing it, you yep. know, on a weekly monthly basis, and finding out how they're growing, how they grow through their equipment and their content, and how they are able to put a show together. Um, it just makes a lot of fun. It really does. Yeah, it's it's amazing to me all the different um, all the different use cases. You know, we have people who are live streaming, you know, all the time, and that's really central to what they're doing and why why they are part of the Ecamm fam. And then you have people who are you know never live streaming. They're using it to record videos in all different kinds of formats for all different kind of use cases. You have people who are you know on calls all the day, all day long on video calls, and they're using it just to really make improvements there and being able to share their screen better or go through presentations in a different way. Uh, so it is amazing. You know, it's, it's the same tool, but, <laughs> but you have people right. using it in all these different ways. So if you, if you have it or if you're you know, new to using Ecamm, just because you got it to do X, Y, Z thing doesn't mean that you can't expand out and you know, add, in different, um, add in these different options, you know. Uh, Doc is a great yeah, example Ecamm, of that. Ecamm has, <laughs> yeah, it's a, it, I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned that because Ecamm, we actually use that. So when we do a home buyer seminar, we do That's a home awesome. buyer, well, let's say workshop. Sure, makes we'll sense. we'll do it virtually. Yep. And when we do it virtually, I actually have a PowerPoint you know, presentation that Absolutely. I've created, yep. But I do everything, I flow everything through Ecamm. Because the the quality and the presentation looks so much better. Exactly, and the control um, you have, I'm yeah. I'm able to connect it. Exactly. Now, it took me a couple of times to, to watch a couple of videos out there on YouTube because there are some great um, instructors of Ecamm that mm -hmm. really have researched it and have been able to put it together in, in video format. But I just I absolutely love it. So I use Ecamm for that as well for my presentations. Yeah, so definitely. Yeah. And shout out um, to Marshall Fox, who is literally going to walk through <laughs> how to do presentations with a keynote this week on Thursday. So if you uh, if you're like, oh, OK, and everything that he'll cover applies to, you know, any of the different presentation tools, PowerPoint as well. But um, yeah, thinking through the different ways that you can use that is is awesome. All right. I, yeah, keynote, I Keynote's great. Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, and it's on your computer if you're an Mac user. So it's, it's right really low lift. It's right there. And it's much easier to use than you think. So yeah, definitely it's some amazing things that you can do to be able to, uh, to make your shows and your presentations and your courses, all of it look just a lot more professional than if you're, um, if you're just doing it yourself. So yeah, some great options yeah. there. Well, I, I'd love to, to hear about some of the the challenges that you have as it, as it comes to video. So, you know, in, in your profession, in your experience, was it just a matter of kind of, you know, forcing yourself to do it and to be consistent? Or were there other different challenges that you had to overcome as you were getting up and running with adding in all these different types of video? So the one challenge I, that I didn't have, and that was content, because especially <laughs> in my industry, there's plenty of Lots content of yeah. that I can use. Sure. Be able to organize that onto, let's say, a whiteboard or be, be able to do a consistent show. I yeah. knew that that was my goal that I had to have something consistent out there yep. for the public to be able to watch, to be able to grow my show, basically. Mm -hmm. um, I had to, to really focus on that. I was never, just FYI, folks, I was never a Mac user at all before I started streaming. I love it. When I invested into Ecamm, I realized that I had to go and grab one of my kids. Um, <laughs> uh, so I use a MacBook Pro is what I use to be able sure. to stream with, and I absolutely love it. I have it beefed up with RAM and things like that. Yeah. But I, I, I used to use uh, their, uh, and I, I have to apologize, I forget the name of it now, but uh, you know the small MacBooks, let's say, I had to use one, borrow one of my kids to be able to stream <laughs> from. I love it. And I, and I contacted the twins about that, and I said, look, this is my dilemma. This is what I'm dealing with. And now that my, gro my show is growing, I'm having some glitching, things like that. With Wi-Fi, they said, Rob you've got to put your big boy pants on your big yeah. streaming pants on, and you've got to really start to, you know, get the right equipment that you need. Cause I started out with a little camera. Uh, you know, I didn't have the big Sony camera and things that I have now. Yeah. Um, so I had, I, as my show grew, so did my equipment. 
um, my lighting, my, my, uh, my, my table, my desk. Um, if you saw what I have here, my boom for my, for my microphone, um, everything. I have a lily put field monitor that I use for That's awesome. you know, things like that. So I've, I've actually grown my equipment or grown my show, um, you know, so, just so I can make it a lot easier for me, especially my stream deck, which has been a, a game changer for me as well. Um, just c keeping my shows and things like that um, uh, organized was really important. So, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that. I love that you started off with your kids' computers. <laughs> with the amount of times that we hear from from members that are like, they're like, I, I did it. I finally went and I bought a Mac so that I can use Ecamm. <laughs> it's just makes right? us makes us so incredibly happy. I think uh, I think it's always just exciting exciting to hear that. I love it. And I, I love that we have a couple of people that have jumped on. Hi to Zoom catchers. Hi to Robin from Florida. I hope it's not crazy hot there, <laughs> Florida Robin. And I did add more uh, more volume to Robert. So if if we're still hearing him a little bit quiet, definitely let me know. But I've been taking Doc's advice and I've been keeping it at 80 on mine and on my guests. So I have room to move if I need to. So in the same way that Robert has been saying that he's learning uh, each and every time, I'm learning a ton. You know, I, I definitely did not come from a live streaming background. So joining this team has been uh, super fun and interesting for me to, to learn, put myself out there and learn kind of all of the, all of the things that happen. It's one thing to, you know, hear customers saying like, you know, I was live and, and you know, and my, my, I, I was hearing an echo on my guest and you're like, oh, okay, I kind of understand that. It's another thing to have that happen to you and know what that feels yes. like and know kind of the, the flood of panic you feel when there's something really important happening. So uh, I love being able to, to get on and, and have these live experiences with our, with our customers. Yeah, if you watch, hope, hoping nothing if you, goes wrong. Yeah, but, you, yeah. That's right. Yeah, if you watch any of my earlier programs, I mean, I was my worst critic, and at the end of every stream that I did, <laughs> yep. I would always say, man, I came in too early on that, or oh, yeah, yeah. there was an echo here. How do I solve that issue? Yep. And so I, obviously you're, you know, I, I just really had to get out of my head and realize that people – people don't really care about that. People nope. just are so excited that, you know, they're able to see you engage with you and they know that those things are going to work out later on. But, you know, I, I trust and believe that most people that even invest in Ecamm, they're already very creative minded anyway. Yep. So they're going to go in and they're either, they're going to create maybe their own overlays or their own intro, like our intro to our show. I created that from scratch, That's awesome. um, but it was so much fun to do, you know, uh, a lot of the commercials and things like that that are embedded in with my our program, you know, we've we've done that all on basically a whiteboard, and we've been able to kind of spread that out. So I love it. Um, you know, it's just it's just so important, I think, and I keep reiterating this. Um, you just got to start. You, you have to start, start. Yep. and you got to get out of your head. Don't worry if your hair is messed up. We <laughs> that's what we want to see. You know what I mean? I have to brush my hair for an hour before every show. You <laughs> Me know, because I and I got to get it out of my head. You know what I mean? It's just you know a uh, bald joke there for anyone uh, that is uh, follically challenged. <laughs> so. I absolutely love it. I think it's really smart to, I actually, I have not talked with a lot of users who are leveraging rolling commercials or ads during their show. So I think it's great that you're doing that. And especially in like for local business owners, you know, we hear all the time, even just even in my kind of my, my non ecam like um, volunteer opportunities and things that I do here in town. It's really difficult for local business owners to know the, you know, the best ways to leverage their, in many cases, smaller ad spend or smaller marketing budget and thinking through like how to do, you know, local shows or bringing on, you know, small businesses that are in town, I think is really smart. And if you're not dealing with local businesses, running like running ad clips during your show, whether it's a, a live show or a video podcast is, is a really smart way to give some sponsors some love and being able to like show the content that they've worked hard to create those, you know, many times those ad videos that they've created are very expensive and very time consuming and being able to feature those in, in a live show is great. So yeah, that's, that's awesome that you're doing that. Yeah. Yeah, invest in your own show. You know, if you mm -hmm. have some time and you want to do a, a transparent overlay with yeah. maybe a logo from a local company or business that you're highlighting on your show, invest in your show. Yeah. Um, it's it's going to make you rise you know, to the top. It really yep. will. 
And, uh, and the other thing is don't be afraid to share your personal story. Mm -hmm. Um, I uh, have for many years was very much afraid to share my personal story because I always felt like that, that kind of, um, made me feel unqualified to do what oh, I'm doing, no, yeah. but we're over a $20 million team. Yeah. I mean, we do very well <laughs> yeah. with when it comes to real estate, yeah. but I tell you what, if you told me when I was 18, 19, 20 years old, that this would, is what I would be doing, I would have told you, heck no, you're crazy, <laughs> especially from my background, you know, so yeah. don't be afraid to share your personal story. People want to know um, who they're listening to, who mm -hmm. they're being engaged with. And they want to know your background because um, listen, people, people just love a story. They love to know your history and where you're coming from. So keep yeah. that in mind when you're doing your program, when you're doing your show. No, that's how, I mean, that's how people relate, you know, back and forth. That's how they're going to get to know you. I mean, the, the, the times where I've like in passing said things like I have backyard chickens or I really like bowling, or <laughs> like all these different weird right. fun facts about me are, you know, things that people bring up later or laugh about or send me fun things. Or it, it's amazing that it's those, it's those moments that people connect with where they're like, Oh, I, you know, Oh, I love hearing about, you know, antiquing and antiques, or I, you know, I've always wondered more about what that, what the auctioneering process is like. I find that incredibly fascinating and knowing that about you is, is interesting. And it's what I'm going to remember about you and about hanging out with you during this time, probably more than the like facts that I know you are going to say, because we're, <laughs> we're talking about live video today. It's the, it's the personal, you know, the personal nature that, That's that right. gives us that connection that makes us want to spend more time together or want to connect with each other later. So yeah, I think, um, That's right. I think adding those personal touches is what helps us stand out. Cause many times there's, you're, I mean, you're, lucky in your space at the moment where there's not as many people that are that are doing what you're doing or that are creating videos or going live but there might be in the future and being able to stand you know and and show off your personality or show off what makes you and your team special and dynamic is what's going to get you customers that are going to love the experience of working with you because they know who you are and they feel like they're you know they feel like they're connected with you i'm constantly shopping and supporting businesses and and different um individuals from, you know, that I've met or feel like I know online, whether it's through a live video or, you know, I'm following them on Instagram or connecting with them in some way that goes beyond just the hard sell. Yeah, it, it's all about connection. It really is. And we know that folks, if we're, you know, you're watching this program right now and you're part of a company and you're thinking of, re of streaming or you're, you've yeah. been a streamer for several years, you know how important it is not so much to, to sell the product in hand, as it is to creating a connection, yeah. a personal connection with that person. Believe me, they're going to call you when they're ready to buy that yep. product, that left-handed swivel nut wrench yep. and uh, the piece of real estate. They're going to call you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Don't worry about that. But be real when you come off to them. Be real. Be genuine. And uh, like I said before, don't be afraid to share your personal story. Yeah. Um, people like to connect with that and they want to know they're talking and they're working with a real person. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, I love it. <laughs> uh, we've, we've burned Great. through all of my questions. I think the only one that we didn't ask was how you found out about Ecamm. So how did you, you, so you, you definitely needed to grab some help <laughs> getting us up and running, but how did you hear about us in the first place? Well, I knew what I wanted to do. Okay. I, I already had that in my mind that yeah. I knew I wanted to get a, a plan. consistent platform. <laughs> yep. I had a plan, mm -hmm. but I just did not have the, the, the technology. Mm -hmm. I did not know anything about the technology or how to get my message out there in a live streaming or a show type of scenario. Yeah. I can record all day mm -hmm. and edit it and put it all together and make it really packaged and beautiful. Um, but to be able to have an engaging live show yeah. where people can actually ask questions from different formats, mm -hmm. me to be able to put their questions on the screen and to be able to answer them live mm -hmm. was amazing to me. And I basically did a Google search is what I did. Yes. And I searched out, there's a couple of different companies <laughs> yeah. out there. But when Ecamm, when I looked at the format and I looked at other programs that were using Ecamm, I realized that this is definitely the company that I need to tie myself in with. They're mm -hmm. easy to use, especially in the earlier days. They're easy to use today. But there's different levels of Ecamm that you have to teach yourself. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of great tutorials out there, folks. I mean, yeah. don't get overwhelmed when you initially see that screen. That screen <laughs> is there for a reason. You have yeah. to basically break it down into each section and, and 
master that section, master, um, yep. you know, the microphone and, and master the overlays mm -hmm. and master your scenes and, and what you're, and, and things of that nature. So, um, yeah. uh, but I just, I just loved it and loved the format that it, and, and how I'm able to even record a video if I just want to record something yeah. uh, onto my computer for me, Cam, I can go ahead and create that. Um, I actually did a marketing video here last <laughs> week yeah. and I forgot to have music in the background. <laughs> and I thought to myself, Rob, are you kidding me? You did this fantastic, you know, three to five minute marketing video. Yeah. And it sounds so blah because I didn't have music. Well, Ecamm allowed me, allows you to be able to put that video back into Ecamm. Yep. Add your music. Yep. Adjust your levels. <laughs> yep. Re-record it on yep. your computer. And now you have a content. I yes. didn't have to re-record. You the don't have to add thing. it. Yep. And it was fantastic. So folks, Ecamm is definitely for me was definitely the way to go. And listen, if I can do it, anybody can do it. Trust <laughs> me when I tell you that. You don't have to be a college educated person, which I am not a college educated person to Love be able it. to do this type of show. You yeah. don't have to. Um, you, you can definitely learn this. And there's certainly a support system. So, uh, you know, as you were saying there, we, you, whether it's here on our YouTube channel or videos.ecam.com, which is our video hub, we have just tons and tons of content. And then honestly, I, I mean, our community and our Discord server are just really great places to be able to practice and ask questions and see what other people are doing and find other, you know, real estate agents or lawyers or content creators or YouTube, whatever category you're in there. We have tons and tons of other members who are just like you who are trying to, you know, get started at all different levels. And it's it's so awesome to see every kind of like sub niche churches and houses of worship who just, you know, they have the same needs and they're able to support each other and practice together and jump on. So it's um, you know, in many ways, our, our strength really is our, our community of, of users who are That's just right. really so amazing at supporting each other. So shout out to all of you for always stepping up and hanging out and offering great ideas and letting us know what's new and happening. It's, it's just really wonderful to see. And actually, where's, on, my, where's my applause button? Hang on. I know. Yeah. Hang yeah, on. I, hang I, on. I, I got it. I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of people out there that are willing to share. And that yeah. is, that's really made me, made our show the way that it is today. Because if it wasn't for those out there that are willing to share their yep. knowledge, willing to share what they learned about ECAM, what they, and, and things of that nature, I, my show wouldn't be anywhere near um, where yeah. it is today. And I really do uh, appreciate those that are, that are willing to collaborate and to, to share their knowledge. It's, it's fantastic. It really is. Yeah. And there's so many out there. There yeah. really is. Yeah, it's uh, it's been amazing. Well, I, as usual, I cannot believe how quickly the time goes by. So thank you so, so much for hanging out with us today, Robert. Is there anything else that you wanted to add? Where can people find you? I know we have your links in the description, but is there any particular project you want to shout out or any anything else you want people to know? Well, we, do, we just do a weekly show. Let's talk real estate. Um, you awesome. can find me on LinkedIn. Go ahead and please search my uh, YouTube channel as well. Yeah. Uh, Robert McArthur. Just type that in. You'll be able to search that. Mm -hmm. Like and follow me on YouTube. You can also go to my Facebook, um, which is forward slash uh, MD Homes Team. Okay. MD Homes Team. MD uh, Homes like Team. Like and follow us there. Yep. And you'll be notified of upcoming shows that come up. So they come up live on my Twitter account, on LinkedIn, on That's Facebook. Awesome. Um, so you can find me through there and we, and we, and you'll be able to meet my wife. So we do a show. <laughs> I it's, love it. it's my wife and I that does the show and, uh, and we just, we can't wait to see you come on, honestly. Oh, that's so nice. I wish I could talk my husband into coming on a regular show with me. He'd be like, no. <laughs> I love that. Well, thank you so much for making the time. And thanks to everyone for hanging out with us again. Uh, you know, quick reminders, as I, I said at the top of the hour, uh, we, you know, we'd love to see you in our Discord or on our in our community. So ecam.tv slash community to find us in our community group. Uh, Discord is ecam.tv slash Discord. And then we do have a... a our usual week of amazing content. So uh, tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern, we have ENN, which is our weekly news show. Thursday, we have Marshall creating, talking all about Keynote. Friday, we have Building Blocks. We have our live demo with Doc Rock um, at our usual time. So there's lots of chances to learn a lot more. Come hang out. Come meet new people. Come support the community. Uh, but we'd love to be able to hang out with you. Uh, but have, hope everyone has an amazing Monday. This has been an awesome way to yes. kick off the week. Thanks so much for spending the time, Robert. Thank you so much, Katie, for having me on. I appreciate that. All right. We'll see you all again next time. Thanks for hanging out. Take care. Bye. See you, everybody.